Welcome to the European Union SME Center. Today's webinar is the imported wine market in China. We review 2017 performance and we give an outlook for this year, for 2018. The European Union SME Center is a project funded by the European Commission and implemented by six chambers of commerce that you can see uh, in this slide in the bottom. Uh, let me tell you my name. My name is Rafael Jimenez. I'm the business advisor of the European Union SME Center. And I have prepared this uh, webinar along uh, a full report on the wine outlook for 2018 in China. Let me say that 22 out of the 28 uh, European Union member states did export wine to China in 2017. The European Union is the world's leader in wine production. Almost uh, half of the global wine growing area and about 60% of the volume comes from the European Union. It is a sector with uh, an overwhelming majority of small or medium enterprises, SMEs. It represents about 20% of the total employment in agriculture in the European Union, employing uh, over 3 million people with uh, family labor force uh, very prevalent. At the same time, the imported wine in China in 2017 is a market already of about 2.5 2.5 billion euro uh, and the European Union wineries or the traders supply more than half of the wines by Bali uh, for these reasons we consider it's interesting to have a yearly report on the situation of the wine market uh, in China I insist that uh, 22, almost 80 percent, 22 out of the 28 member states currently are exporting wines to China. A very brief message, what happened in 2017, still the market is growing steady to digits. Uh, it grow above 17 percent in volume and above 18 percent uh, in value of uh, 2016. So any fear about the wine business in China slowing down too much uh, are not correct. We foresee a healthy market and we encourage you to pay attention to what's going on in the wine business in China. Some highlights about 2017. About the category there has been uh, a bit unexpected a substantial growth of uh, bulk wine imports uh, in quantity is growing about 25 percent and uh, sorry yes in quantity and uh, 41 percent in value this is due to reasons like uh, OAM in the wines I mean they are acquiring bulk wines some um, uh, facilities in China that later on they do the bottling of the wines and perhaps we are trying to do a further research to some subsidies that uh, companies are receiving uh, which encourage them to acquire the liquid and then produce the, uh, the bottles here. It is true to say that bottled wine imports moderated its growth however it's a still a two-digit growth, quite healthy. It's growing 15% in volume and in value. Uh, regarding sparkling wines, the volume is as small as the increase is less than 5%. However, uh, we can tell you that in 2017, the value uh, is a skyrocketing, probably because champagnes are back. And the value is uh, increase is 33%. The average sift price per bottle of uh, sparkling wine is uh, 4 euro and the average uh, price uh, before 
clearing customs for still wine is about three euros. That allows us to say that the average or typical bottle imported into China is what? Is a young red wine okay for about three months. About the suppliers, France, Australia and Chile are again the top three suppliers of wine to China. Uh, sparkling wine, however, is a matter of three European Union countries, France, namely France, Italy and Spain. Bull wines, three countries uh, have 90% of export, Chile, Australia and Spain. However, France has decided to enter also in the business of bull wines. We have new entrants in China, such as Moldova, Montenegro, even Russia. And the rising star are the wines from the Danube River that now have a say in China. And Bulgaria is the country growing most its exports of wine to China. So congrats to Bulgarian friends and also because they have very good wines. Some people always ask which is the ratio of imports of wine in China between the old world and the new world, the so-called two different areas in which the wine is divided. Well, the split is 56-44 between the old world and new, uh, new countries making wine. About the market, uh, in euros is 2.5 billion, 2017, the imports. Let me say that uh, attaining, as is expected in 2018, 3 billion, which I think is perfectly possible, uh, it would mean a tenfold increase in wine imports since 2018, which is pretty much equivalent to a sustained 26% compound annual growth over the last decade, which is a phenomenal uh, growth. Uh, you know, so China has some free trade agreements with certain countries. Some of them are wine countries, Chile, New Zealand, uh, Australia, most recently Georgia. And there is a warm response of the Chinese market to the wine from these countries because obviously uh, they enjoy some preferential treatment when paying taxes and duties at customs and importers notice so they are paying attention to these countries which have improved the performance certainly in part due to the preferential treatment of the free trade agreements that these countries enjoy with China. But the market is also important to notice that China is far more advanced than, even if this is a surprise for many, but it's true that China is far more advanced in e-commerce and online sales than anywhere else. So online is disrupting all, is disrupting also the wine sales channels. Uh, my advice is and the advice of the importers, uh, pay attention to the online sales channel in China. It is uh, fundamental. Uh, we conducted a search in Baidu, the uh, primary uh, search engine in China, and also in WeChat, in WeChat Index, to check which is the key factor that goes along with the keyword wine when doing a search on the internet in China. Well, the key question still is, is it a known brand? This remains as the most, most often used qualifier in online wine searches. Why is this? Well, uh, Chinese in average still don't know much about wine, so it, is, it makes perfect sense this question. This wine that you're showing to me on the internet is it a known brand? This is uh, the first, questions, first question they ask when uh, they're trying to learn about wines. Continuing with the market, uh, we noticed that the digital marketing is a must to effectively market wines. 
So, whatever your plans for selling wines in China are, you have to reserve some time to learn about uh, digital marketing techniques. It is uh, fundamental in China. There is a price pressure to import cheaper wines. Currently, the export price, uh, the typical export price of a bottle is about Euro, uh, 3 euros. Uh, as I said before, this hypothetical average bottle is pretty much equivalent to, to a young wine. Okay, this young wine of 3 euros uh, export will have a tag price on the shelf of about uh, 100 yuan. Also, it's important to notice the transition in China to a full cashless economy, it is almost completed. Although not known in the West, maybe, let me tell you that in China everyone is paying everywhere and everything, even in small quantities with the smartphone. Well, wine is a fast-moving consumer goods, so the process of payment which encourage uh, consumers when they have the boost to buy something and it's very easy to buy anything everywhere uh, affects uh, your, the way you market the wines. So bear in mind that in China uh, it's a cashless economy almost now so this impacts the way you will sell the wine in China for sure. About consumers which are the highlights in 2017? Well, the modern Chinese consumer is already here and is driving the increase in consumption. It's a new consumer, different from other age segments. Uh, more wealthy, but that means has more choices and maybe less loyalty. Uh, the wine world fits well here because the diversity of the wine world is enormous. So it's a category that fits well to the desire of the modern Chinese consumer, which is the experience and to try new things. So it is good news uh, for the wine producers. However, they are more demanding consumers, they are more savvy, they know more. So they want value for money. And this is putting a pressure uh, to import uh, cheaper wines. I wouldn't say never bad wines, of course, but wines where the ratio uh, between the quality and the price is adequate, okay? Think that uh, taxes or duties at customs are high, about 50%, 48.2. Uh, if you are not under a free trade agreement. So you calculate that each euro means, the, the, the taxes at customs means uh, at the end uh, an extra 25 renminbi per euro on the shelf. So wine is uh, still expensive if, it's, if the country does not have a free, free trade agreement and part of the pressure of the European Union countries is the fact that countries such as Australia or Chile they have in place uh, a free trade agreement with China that exempts them of a cost that has to be paid by European Union exporters. About the consumer also, still on average, they lack knowledge of wines. However, this is just an average statement. This largely, largely varies per city and per consumer segment. There are places where there are people connoisseur of wines and in others, however, the knowledge is uh, very little. You keep in mind this also when bringing your wines to China. In some places you will find a very educated consumer, in others they will have, you will have to educate them in the wine world. Let me also uh, stress that consumption is growing at a faster pace in the inland cities. So in Shanghai or in Beijing, the people is spending. The pace of uh, increase of the spending by the citizens is faster in inland cities such as Chengdu. So the uh, wine war in China is not only Beijing or Shanghai or Guangzhou or Shenzhen. Uh, you need to consider 
second, third and fourth tier cities where there is certainly a segment of people interested or new consumers interested in the wine war. Do not forget that the Chinese consumer is fully connected around the clock via the smartphone and more specifically via WeChat. They see the world through a home screen which is called WeChat and it is a stunning but 82% uh, of the online purchases now are initiated at the smartphone and we believe there will be soon something like 90%. So uh, online means a cell phone and less and less means desktop. Our forecast for 2018, we believe in volume will be about 870 million liters, which uh, and in value will go uh, well above uh, uh, in dollars over the 3 billion and in euros we calculate about 3 billion euros imports okay uh, possibly australia could join could, could attain the mark of uh, one billion dollars this is a status that so far only has france i think if i remember what i recall well they achieved this about two years ago and uh, as i said uh, before you can consider that the typical bottle is uh, an entry-level bottle, about e three euros. Okay, uh, that bottle of three euros will have later on the shelf a price of about 90 or 100 renminbi. So the imported wines in China we consider capture about 30 percent of the total wine market, uh, with a value of uh, 24 billion euros. Reviewing performance uh, for steel wines, uh, five wine countries make 90% of the imports. Those are France, which is the superpower in wine, of course, Australia, Chile, Spain, and Italy. France holds the lead. Uh, they have shifted the strategy a bit now because they had a 2016 that, although it was good for the standards of France, was not so good. Uh, let me remember that France has uh, around 40% of the total business. So for their standards, while 2016 was not very satisfactory, although for any other country it would have been fantastic. So there we notice a shift to volume rather than to value, except for the sparkling wines. And now they're growing, contrary to the rest of the countries, they are growing more in volume than in value. This is quite a shift, but uh, it looks like uh, the French people want to be in all segments and in all prices. So they want also the top value, but also the volume. The rest of the countries is struggling to premiumize, I mean, to, to shift to more value rather than quantity, and we can notice into the average prices of the wines each of the countries is sending to China. About the winners in value, well, Bulgaria, 130% uh, increase, and in Bolivia, another European country, not European Union, but European country, Montenegro, with also 132% increase in volume. Uh, I always put the wine arrivals seasonality so you can see clearly uh, when the wines are arriving to China. Please notice the impact of the Chinese New Year in where you have to be ready to send or make your shipments in time for Chinese New Year. Sparkling wines. Well, here we do not have a typical average bottle. It's not possible because champagnes are back. And so we have in, let's say, in the premium uh, uh, in the premium band of the sparkling wines, we have the champagnes with about 13 or 14 uh, shift price, euros, shift price. While in the entry level, we have typically two euro uh, uh, wines, which are either Spumante from Itali Italy or Cava from Spain. Uh, 
the winner in value. Of course, as I said before, champagnes are back, France. Again, uh, the top sparkling wines uh, are demanded by the, by the Chinese. This time for drinking, not for gifting, which is good news, 57% increase. Highest growth in volume, another, uh, not a surprise, but uh, Moldova wines. The volume increased fivefold in 2017. Bull wines is a matter of only three countries, although France is starting to pay attention to this segment. Spain, Chile, and Australia share 90% of import. The importance of bull wines is not the same for the three countries, while it is 18% for Chile and Spain. It is only 6% for Australia. And remarkable, this entry of France into the bulk business too. Uh, actually, the highest growth in volume this year has been for France. France triples the volume of its bulk wine exports and Spain triples the value. Uh, Spain is so in bulk wines so a powerhouse like Chile and to some extent Australia. In closing, uh, let me show you that in, on the left you have our new report, the Imported Wine Market in China 2018. It's a full complete report on the situation. You have all sorts of tables and analysis. And what I did is I picked up the page of conclusions and uh, you can see in yellow the things you have to consider about the Chinese market uh, for this year. It is on a steady growth, more healthy growth. This is very good news, two digits growth and it is because Chinese consumers want to drink wine. It's, it is not used for other purposes, like, uh, well, whatever. Now it's used for drinking. It is important that uh, you know the access regulations, okay? It's sending wine to China. It is not difficult, but you need to know uh, several market regulations or be aware of what you have to do. Register your brand, please, because uh, your brand defines your wine, it's important for you, and the system in China is a bit different. It's first to file, so we encourage you to register your brand. We said it before, we said it again. The online sales channel is paramount in China. Learn about uh, the way it works. It is important also for the wine category. Get familiar with uh, China's social network, the way Chinese interact on the internet and through the cell phone. And do not forget that the hopes and the rewards can be very high, actually they are, but the competition is also extremely high. Expect all your competitors worldwide to be also in China. It's a huge market and it's of interest for everyone. There is no second China. I mean, the market is huge, and there is no other alternative. I mean, you will not find any other country with the potential for wine that China has now. Uh, we expect it will be soon the second, uh, probably next year, the second consumer worldwide. Uh, and all of these things I just mentioned uh, build our final conclusion. We encourage you to consider if you are not doing yet selling your wines in China. The news are good. Remember the 20 out, 22 out of the 28 member states are already exporting wines to China. We used to ask stakeholders in the market their opinions and this is what we do did this time also. So this is what the Chinese importer and retailer China wide thinks. They think that it's getting better. They mention the Chinese consumer, and they mention that uh, Chinese like to host guests now with wines instead of some other drinks, which is good news for the wine world. 
We ask also another importer, but this time European, which is also retailer China-wide. And uh, director and founder told us that drinking wine has become already a lifestyle for this new consumer, for young Chinese consumer. Uh, also stress that competition is tough, but you have tough competition everywhere in the world. So this is not different from some other markets that you are currently exporting. We ask also to an importer doing on working only in the own trade uh, and not China wide, but quite uh, with uh, tremendous expertise in cities like Beijing, Tianjin, Shanghai, and Zuzhou. Uh, and they tell us that the market is getting more mature and uh, there is a sophisticated user or consumer that now uh, not necessarily will drink the more known appellations. Maybe they're asking for more uh, difficult to find wines because they like the experience and learning about finds not so well known, which is also good news. We ask a brand and they show, they are pretty confident that uh, sparkling premium and sparkling wines will continue or will be growing in the next five to ten years. They mentioned the impact of tourism. The Chinese tourist goes abroad and returns with more knowledge about wines in Europe or elsewhere, which also helps to market fine boutique uh, champagnes in this case. We never forget consultants in the market, and uh, what the consultant tell us is that the wine market is growing steadily, will continue growing, and also remind us the role of social media. Uh, Mr. Philip tells us that uh, considering social media for drinking wines must be a crucial part in your market strategy. We finished uh, with our wine report, it is published uh, along with this webinar. It is pretty updated. We have all the numbers up to the end of December 2017. You can find all the tables we have used to crunch the numbers. And uh, we provide also uh, who are the top 100, import, 100 importers of bottled wine. We analyze the pricing, uh, how to build the price up to the self, self price, etc. We analyze the behavior in 2017 of the different types of wine, etc. So we recommend this report if you are interested in the wine market in China. With this, we finish and we thank you very much for paying attention to this report. If you have any question, please write to us to the email address that you can see on the slide below the report. Thank you very much. Bye now.